Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw, and I was talking to a friend recently, and On One, the subject of On One came up, and I realized I hadn't done a video in quite a while, so I'm way, way overdue. But the uh, one of the questions that this person asked me, or kind of comments, was that, that there's a lot in On One, and that it can be overwhelming, especially if you're a newer user, because On One can do, honestly, so, so many things. There's so much capability. It's an incredibly robust and rich product. And so I think if you're a newer user to the product or the platform, it can be a little overwhelming, but it doesn't have to be. And I want to show you in this video how you can take a photo that's kind of blah, in fairness, and with some simple moves, you can really transform something from kind of blah to beautiful. And it doesn't take a lot of complicated maneuvers or anything like that. So I'll be walking through that in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. This is a shot from London. It's a longer exposure, and it's just nice, smooth water, smooth skies, and that sort of thing. But as you can tell, very blah. Uh, it is a raw file, so you know, they tend to be a little flatter. But it's also just boring color. And I want to amp it up. I want to make kind of an urban, kind of a cityscape look that has a lot of a kind of a moody feel and a lot of punch to it. And that's what we're going to do in this video with, again, some simple moves, but you still get a stunning transformation out of it. So I always start in toning color. Uh, you can use Brilliance AI. I'm not going to use it in this video, but it does a great job of getting you started if you're not really sure what to get started with. But um, in this case, I'm doing just a couple of simple things over here. And all this is is really just adjusting the light, uh, which is what I always like to do in terms of uh, starting out any of my uh, my edits. Uh, just kind of brightened it. And what I'm really going for here is a little bit flatter overall look. Now, I am going to create a little bit more of a dramatic photo, so I'm going to come back later and kind of reverse some of this stuff. It's not something that you have to do. Uh, I have a long history of wanting to start my edit with a fairly flat photo, so I can kind of add drama in areas where I want to add drama as opposed to necessarily doing it globally. So it's just a personal preference. Uh, but one thing I really need to do is cool this off because it's way, way, way too kind of orangey, yellowy warm. So I want it to be cooler. And that's just taking the temperature down. So already, it's honestly, I think, much improved before and current state. Now, one of the things that I think people aren't super uh, comfortable with all the time is the fact that you have all these different tabs that you can play with. And my typical approach is to start and develop and then go to local and then go to effects. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, if you're replacing a sky, you'd want to go to sky as well. And of course, this is not a portrait, so we're not going to need that tab either. And I'm not replacing the sky, but I'm going to go to local next. And local is, as you, as you add an adjustment, you'll see all these sliders here, very similar to what you had in uh, develop. It just gives you another um, option for applying these. And this is where I start to kind of customize the light a little bit. And I'm going to do that by going into masking and building a luminosity mask. So that's built. Let me show you the mask. Uh, it's this little button here that looks like a light bulb. You click it and it builds, as you can see, as a hover. It says create luminosity mask. It does it automatically. It's really great. But what I want to do is invert that. And so I'm going to click this little icon, which is the reversal or the invert of that uh, luminosity mask. And so if you're not familiar with luminosity mask, I may come back and do more videos about it. But bottom line, it's a mask built on light values. So if anything is brighter, more of the mask gets applied there. And if it's darker, less of the mask gets applied there, which means the whiter stuff gets more of the effect. The darker stuff, stuff gets less of the effect, and it varies based on the grayscale in between. So I'm going to come in, and I want to customize this. And the way I like to customize my masks, which is really just adjusting how much intensity is going to apply to which tonal area, is by using these levels sliders. Now, I'm not going to dive into any uh, real depth about how to use these in this video, because that's really a different video altogether. And in fact, if I, uh, I believe I have a video about it, I'll try to link it there if I can find it. But it's in a previous version, but it works the same. All I've done is customize the mask to exclude more of the sky, right? More black in the sky means less of the effect is going there. And uh, still keeping the white on the, uh, the buildings primarily and a little bit on the water. So now that I've done that, I'm going to click this button to uh, hide the mask so I can just see the photo. And I'm going to click the masking word to hide the masking menu. And now I'm down here in this adjustment and I'm going to make those adjustments. The first thing is I want about a negative uh, 25, uh, 0.25, I should say, on the exposure. So it's a slight darkening, 
But again, it's not applying evenly across the photo, and that's the beauty of the luminosity mask. Because I've created a mask based on light values, the effects that I'm adjusting here with these sliders are applying based on uh, where the mask is heavier versus lighter. And so, as you saw, this is more so going into the buildings and some in the water. And again, these are just minor moves in uh, these sliders here, but it's really just down to adjusting the light so I can kind of create the look that I'm going for in this photo, which is gonna be a little bit more dramatic and moody overall look. So as you can see here, I've darkened the blacks and the shadows and the midtones and added a little bit of contrast, and that's just getting me a little bit more of a punchy overall look. I'm kind of essentially refining the contrast with this entire local adjustment. So if I show you the before, quite a bit flatter, even distribution of light more so and now with a local adjustment with the luminosity mask targeted mostly to the buildings and some in the water and then some moves that have been designed to darken those areas i've got a bit more contrast so one more time before and after so that's all i'm going to do with local adjustments i'm now going to jump into effects now I'm going to try to avoid confusion here because in a couple of these effects i'm going to use masks and the mask allow you to essentially create a local adjustment for that effect. It's the same idea, and that's what masking is. It's all about how do I localize uh, whatever effect that I'm applying. So don't confuse local adjustments with effects, uh, but they both use masks um, if you want them to, right? So that's kind of how that works. The first thing I want to do is I want to pop those buildings a little bit. And here's where some of the simplicity uh, that I'm talking about to help you make a transformation comes into play because you click to add a filter and you can see I can apply a mask to lots of different things. And what I wanna do is apply it to the buildings. So I'm gonna choose architecture. I'll choose natural ground. I'm not really sure what that's grabbing. And I'm gonna choose transport, which is gonna get those boats that are there in the river Thames. And I'm gonna add HDR look to all of those areas. So all I've done is create a mask targeted to those areas automatically. I just pointed and clicked and it did it for me. And then I drop the HDR look filter and all it does, I'm gonna use natural here in case there's any adjustments to these sliders. And all it does is just stick that stuff on those uh, buildings. Now, if I show you the mask, let me do that real quick. Let's get up here and click the goggles. That's where the mask is. White reveals, black conceals. That's a key thing to remember about masking. So the effect is being revealed where it's white and concealed or not showing up where it's black. Now here's the other thing. I showed you earlier how you can use levels. We can use it here to kind of refine those edges. It's not perfectly along uh, those edges, but you can come in here and drag these level sliders and kind of tighten that up or you know increase or decrease the, the area that's being targeted by that. So I can refine that a little bit with these level sliders. And you can also do that some with window. But again, I'm not getting into those in depth in this video, but I have tightened up those masks a little bit. And so that just creates a little bit crisper edge, a little bit more control over the mask. But now, um, let me close masking menu. If I turn off the HDR look filter before, especially if you look at the buildings like right over here, you'll see that. So there it is before. And now I turn this back on and there it is. Gives it a little bit of that HDR look, but not an over the top because I did choose this natural style. It's kind of a preset, if you will. Um, and uh, it also brightens those areas, so it gives them a little bit better visibility, which I also like. Now, we're going to go ahead and add another filter, and this time I'm going to get dynamic contrast, but I want to apply this to the sky and the water. In the old days, you, have to ma you used to have to mask these things manually, and it was so much work, and now it's so simple. I literally pointed at the water. Uh, excuse me, I clicked the button for water and clicked the button for sky. It chose them automatically, and then I choose my filter dynamic contrast, and what I want to do here is just apply dynamic contrast in a negative manner across the sky and the water. And that's all you know, roughly a negative 30. And that's all that I'm doing is by using negative dynamic contrast in the sky and water, I'm just smoothing it out. And that's because it's a personal preference. I just like smoother skies and smoother water. And this is already a long exposure. So it kind of, I'm kind of leaning into that effect that the, uh, that the exposure already had the way I took it. So before, and now after. Now the other uh, fun thing that's included in uh, Nuan is uh, when you add a filter, you have the ability to add LUTs. And this is gonna be a color grade, if you will. And so there's different categories and different LUTs in each one. I'm gonna go into the color grading category. 
and I'm going to include, uh, include one called Resolute. It gives it this nice kind of urban, modern blue feel, which I, I honestly, I just think it looks fantastic. And the only thing I'm going to do is put on the opacity to, you know, low 80s, 80, 81, 82, something like that. So um, that's one of the key things about on one that I really like is in each one of these filters that I'm adding in the effects menu, I have this opacity slider so I can apply an effect and if I like it, but I want to ratchet it back a little bit instead of kind of messing around with the sliders here and trying to fine tune it. I can just say, hey, take the opacity slider and slide it left to reduce the overall intensity of that. So I get it applied, but a little bit less, in, in, you know, globally. Uh, so I'm going to go for about an 80 there. And I think that looks really good. And that's giving me this nice, cool blue look, which I like a lot in these urban cityscape kind of looks, especially with this part of London. It's a very modern part of London with the shard over there. And this is their city hall building. You add that blue look to it, especially under cloudy, overcast, really blah colored skies. And you start to get a really nice overall color grade to it. So now next thing I'm going to do is just a couple of little touch up moves. This is another filter. This time I'm going to use tone enhancer, but I'm not going to use a mask. So for HDR look, dynamic contrast, I used a mask on both of those to be targeted. The color grade with the LUT was global, applied everywhere. This is also global. And I, I often use tone enhancer at the end of my edits just to do a little bit of refinement to the light overall. And this is just amping up a, a little bit of that drama. So I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, like a five or six, and I'm gonna pull the highlights down very minor, like a negative five. And I'm going to pull the shadows down as well, like a negative four. And I'm going to pull the blacks down like at a negative seven or eight. All I'm doing is creating a little bit more contrast. I'm kind of leaning into the kind of drama, if you want to use that term, that I'm kind of manufacturing uh, for this photo. But if you look at the before, there it is before. And the after adding tone enhancer gives it a nice little bit of pop. And speaking of the last pop, uh, the last thing I want to do is actually go add the curves filter. Now, if you're not familiar with curves, You've probably heard of it, you've probably seen it, and maybe you're intimidated by it. And it is a very powerful tool. It does a lot of different stuff. And I'm not gonna do very much with this, uh, with, with the curves tool in this uh, video. Um, and in fact, I'm gonna skip the tone curve altogether and I'm gonna go straight to where it says blue. And that's one of the great things about the, the tone curve is you have the ability to come in and adjust colors and you can adjust them in all the different tonal areas. Well, I've already created that blue look thanks to that LUT. But what I want to do is kind of get a little bit more blue and I want to get it in all the tonal areas. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drop a point right there in the center and that's really the mid-tones. And you can see the up and to the left is more blue and down and to the right is more yellow because this is the blue and yellow spectrum, if you will. So all I'm doing is going to drag the mid-tones slightly upward and to the left and that gives it a little bit more blue in the mid-tones. I'm going to do the same thing with the highlights. So just a tiny bit more blue there. And this is the shadows down here. And I'm going to do a tiny bit more there. Now notice if I pulled this to the right, it starts adding yellow. We don't want yellow, especially going in the shadows because shadows are darker, which to me is more blue. Uh, and so it just uh, makes more sense for it to be more blue. All I'm doing is just kind of leaning in here to the blue, using a tone curve just on the blue to kind of add a little bit more blue to the highlights and midtones and the shadows. So the overall adjustment or look uh, adjustment to this color is, there it is before, it had a blue look to it, uh, but it was a little bit more of a steel blue. And now adding this extra little bit of blue with the curves tool is really leaning into that and giving me a nice overall kind of look and feel to the photo. And that's the full edit. It was pretty simple and straightforward. Some stuff on the develop tab. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I really prefer to do things, and I think it simplifies your workflow if you do it in this order. We go develop, make your basic adjustments, local, where you want to make some localized mast adjustments, and then come into effects and do some things here with masks or not, depending on what the tool is. But it gives you the ability to really customize the look. And as I said at the beginning of the video, you can make a really stunning transformation. This was brownish yellow, fairly overcast, flat light, Kind of boring overall, but some key adjustments targeted with masks and using some specific tools, you can have a huge, huge impact on the photo and make a really, I think, beautiful transformation before and after. That's the power of On One, my friends. Hope this has given you some ideas about how you can implement this in your own workflow and your own photos. Thanks for hanging out and watching this video. I'll be back soon with more. Subscribe if you haven't yet and uh, take care of yourselves out there, my friends. 
I'll be back soon. Take care. And until next time, adios.